Well, hello, free people of the Rocky Mountain region. My name is Brandon, and welcome to this Free State Colorado interview. The mission of Free State Colorado is to promote a culture of liberty, freedom of the individual, and a free market. Today, I'm joined by Wayne Harlos. Wayne is the chairman of the Libertarian Party of Colorado, where he has served for many years. Just recently, the Libertarian Party of Colorado, or LPCO, joined a judicial watch lawsuit against the Colorado Secretary of State for failing to remove dead and relocated voters. Wayne, I hope you are well, and thank you for joining me today. I am. Thank you for having me, Brandon. Awesome. Well, Wayne, the Libertarian Party of Colorado is the third largest political party in Colorado. What specifics can you tell us about what the party's doing in this lawsuit against the Secretary of State? Well, we were we were reached out to by Judicial Watch. I happen to be a member, and uh, they reached out to me and said that they had a lawsuit uh, that they had started, and they wanted to know if we would like to join them as a co-plaintiff against Janet Griswold for not updating the voter rolls. Um, the board, Colorado LPCO board, we met and we voted on it, and we agreed to join the lawsuit. And uh, so right now we are a co-plaintiff. We've been accepted by the state to be a co-plaintiff. So the wheels are turning. That's great. Well, let's talk a little bit about the specifics of the lawsuit. Um, you know, federal law requires the Secretary of State to conduct a, quote, reasonable list of maintenance program, end quote. But it seems our Secretary of State doesn't want to abide by this federal law. At least that's what the lawsuit's alleging. So I saw that Judicial Watch claims that 40 of Colorado's 64 counties have voter registration rates exceeding 100 percent, meaning that the percentage of Colorado counties exceeding 100 percent is the highest out of any other state in the country. I mean, what what kind of specifics can you tell us about um, this failure to clean up the voter rolls, and what's the background here? Well, we've had a problem for many years, especially with the mail-in ballots. I mean, if people had to go to the polls to vote, we wouldn't have this problem. Uh, but with the mail-in uh, ballots, it's crucial that the voter rolls are kept up to date. And right now, um, the... NVRA, that's National Voter Rights Act, requires the Secretary of State to make a reasonable effort to remove uh, anybody from the official list of eligible voters. And um, she has not done that. And um, that would be people that either moved or have passed away. And they're still on the voter rolls and they're still getting ballots sent out. So there's a bunch of ballots being sent out right now that can be filled out by anybody. And that's a real problem. Definitely. Yeah. Very concerning that there is such a big opportunity in Colorado for voter fraud. I mean, voter fraud has been the talk uh, and election integrity for several years now. And to see here's a, a real way for people to actually kind of clean up the voter rolls and ensure, you know, this lawsuit's a great way for the voter rolls to be cleaned up and help prevent some of potential voter fraud. Like you said, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy that there could be extra ballots laying around and possible for somebody to fill them out and then drop them off. Sure, there's safeguards in, in check, but nonetheless, there's still an opportunity there for people who want to vote illegally. That is true. And let me tell you what the process is that um, our Secretary of State is uh, required to go through to, to double check the voter rolls. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read this right from the complaint. Um, with respect to voters who have changed residence, the NVRA, that's the National Voter Rights Act, provides that they must be removed from a jurisdiction's voter rolls, but only if registrants either, number one, confirm that in writing that they have moved outside the jurisdiction or fail to respond to an address confirmation notice and fail to vote during a statutory waiting period um, extended from the date of the notice through the next two general federal elections. So if that is not if that procedure is not followed, then there's a breach of the procedure, and that's what the lawsuit's about. Interesting. Interesting. So people aren't being removed from the voter rolls, potentially yeah, creating a situation um, that's inaccurate for one. And then also, you know, for people who've worked in politics before or worked on campaigns, it can be really frustrating not to have accurate information in terms of contacting your contacting your potential voters. Well, very much so. And it, it costs a lot of money and time uh, for candidates and political parties that are out there trying to, to meet the voters that they feel would support their cause. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example. My wife, Karen Ann Harlos, is running for town council. And we'll find out tonight if she 
is going to win. <laughs> I hope she is. Uh, but in an effort to reach out to, number one, the libertarian voters in her district, uh, we pulled up from the Secretary of State's website all of the registered um, libertarians. We went out knocking on doors to talk to each and every one of those libertarians. And obviously, with, with 10,000 doors to knock, we could only select a few to actually knock on the doors because of the time uh, requirements. Uh, but I'd say about a third of the addresses that we knocked, um, people answered the door and said, well, no, that person you're looking for hasn't lived here in years. We bought this house from them three years ago. And that was very, very common. Um, or the address was never correct to start with. So obviously the confirmation uh, letter that should have been sent out to confirm um, the people who lived there was never sent out because it couldn't have been returned. And uh, we spent a lot of money on postcards out to all the libertarians as well as the independents. And we got, I'd, I'd say of the libertarians, we probably got 30% of them back. Of the independents that we sent out, we probably got 20% back. So the amount of money and the amount of time that we wasted was very expensive uh, to us. And I'm sure every other candidate that put the effort in that we put in uh, was facing the same problems. Well, that's a great point. Yeah, especially, you know, candidates that don't have the resources that these multimillionaire people do, you know, with federal support, these Washington, D.C. based PACs and and C4s and other organizations coming in, spending money in Colorado. Sure, they can they can afford to maybe blanket the state with millions of dollars worth of mailers and ads. But, yeah, for grassroots candidates, for people who are citizens wanting to represent their community, to have a voice, it's very unfair for them to to have this inaccurate information, to have the secretary of state not living up to their job and not providing them with the information they need in order to effectively run for office. Well, that's the cost in time and money, but we also have the problem of so many counties have more votes cast than they have voters. And that obviously is a recipe for fraud. Um, now, I don't know for sure that that's the case, but it would appear as though it is. Definitely. Definitely. You know, um, it's well, it's great to see, Wayne, that the LPCO is fighting for their party members. You know, obviously a concern would be your my vote would be diluted. Right. My vote wouldn't count as much if there's other non eligible right. voters that I'm competing against. Now, my one vote versus 10 uneligible voters will kind of washed out my say. So uh, kudos for the LPCO. Kudos for you for leading this charge and really getting involved in in, in fighting out there for us. Well, we've been joined. There are there are several co-plaintiffs. The Constitution Party has also joined the lawsuit. Um, the Democrats, obviously, they didn't want to have anything to do with it because they don't want to clean up the vo voter rolls. The Republicans are making their own efforts, so they didn't join the lawsuit. Uh, so the Libertarian Party of Colorado, their largest political party in Colorado, was asked to join. And uh, by unanimous vote, our board voted to join Nice. That's awesome. That's great. It's great to see the board uh, leading this fight and, and standing up for the voters here. And I, I just have to think, too, you know, as a as a Libertarian Party member, if I moved and my ballot was delivered to somebody else, to an old address where somebody got the somebody got it. I mean, as a Libertarian, it'd be horrifying that my vote would go to an authoritarian Republican or Democrat. <laughs> well, not only that, you don't have the chance to vote. You'd have to go down to the uh, to the voter registration office and say, hey, I never got my ballot. And then they'd have to recreate one. And then that creates a headache for the um, uh, for the clerk and recorder in whatever county you have to live in, happen to live in. And so it's a, it's a tremendous waste of time. Wow. Well, that's something the government is good at, is wasting time and money. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have time and money. <laughs> and it's not their money. Definitely. Well, Wayne, is there anything that uh, us libertarians or um, concerned citizens can do to help uh, help the LPCO in this cause? At this point, I think the wheels are already well underway. I, I, Brandon, I don't think there's anything that anybody can do to help us at this point uh, other than you know stay in touch with us. And of course, uh, we'll, we'll probably have a press release out by the end of the week. Um, but this is this is public now. The lawsuit is public, including our involvement. Um, so we'll, we'll put up a press release and hopefully it will bring some people into the party that will help support us. 
That's great, Wayne. Yeah, it's it's refreshing to see. Hopefully, it's refreshing for a lot of people who maybe left the Republicans, left the Democrats because the parties didn't represent them or weren't fighting for their interests. And here we have the Libertarian Party kind of filling that gap, you know, fighting for the fighting for the citizens of the state. So cool to see. You bet. Now I'm I'm very proud to be associated with the folks who joined us. All of our board That's... members bellied up to the bar and they're they're fighting it. Well, that's awesome, Wayne. Is there anything else uh, we should know? Uh, this obviously, we probably won't hear anything on this for a couple months. Uh, a couple of the uh, top dogs from uh, Judicial Watch will be here next week, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have dinner with them, and we're gonna talk about the next step. I may be required to be deposed. Um, if that's the case, I'll, I'm happy to do that. So um, we'll see if that if that's a necessity or if this is such a slam dunk that the judge doesn't require it. Interesting. Well, please keep us updated on the status of the lawsuit and keep us updated on the status of of what we can do as liberty as liberty minded individuals to help further the cause of liberty in Colorado. You know, the biggest thing that I think people can do to help bring um, attention to this and obviously also to grow the Libertarian Party is to get involved in your local county affiliate if you have one. Uh, if you don't happen to have a county affiliate, start one. And we, we have the mechanisms to help you make that happen. Um, but it's always fun when you get together with, with a bunch of like-minded people and get involved in a cause together. And that's what the, the value of joining the local affiliates is. And, uh, you know, go to the Liberty on the Rocks if they happen to have one in your area, one that's close enough to you that it, it makes sense to, to make the drive. Um, but there's a lot of Liberty events that are going on uh, that people don't go to. And there's nothing more fun than getting together um, over beer or a cup of coffee with somebody that uh, is like minded. 100% agree with that. And I think the Liberty community is growing in Colorado. And I think people are more so than ever, especially a lot of young people and disenfranchised people of all ages who are looking for a home, looking for a place to to find like-minded individuals. So yeah, definitely. I echo that 100%. Get involved and, and meet meet people. There's another thing. If, uh, if somebody is a registered Republican or Democrat or even unaffiliated, um, I would encourage you to consider changing your voter registration to libertarian. And I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of people that get disenfranchised by the duopoly, the Republicans or Democrats, um, they join the uh, unaffiliated ranks. And all that tells the duopoly is that you're not happy with them, but you're not saying why. And if you vote as a, or change your voter registration to a libertarian, you're saying, I'm unhappy because the government's too big. And you're sending a very, very clear signal to um, to the duopoly when you change your voter registration to libertarian. Um, if you're unaffiliated, you know, they just know that you're not happy, but they don't know why. That's a great point. Yeah, 100%. I think the Libertarian Party is making some big waves this year and uh, look forward to the progress the Libertarian Party of Colorado can continue to make going forward. Beautiful. I'd also like to encourage anybody to donate to the Libertarian Party of Colorado. Um, you know, it costs money to have a political party up and running. And um, even a small contribution, $5 a month. Um, if we get 100 people to do that, that'll make a big difference in our bottom line at the end of the year. We'll give us money to pay for outreach events. You know, rent, we, when we have a booth at a, say, county fair um, or uh, Douglas County is going to have uh, a booth at the Starlighting event, which is a yearly event that we do every year. And it costs money. You have to rent the booth space. You have to pay for the insurance. Um, it's just, you know, obviously we have the volunteers that man the booths, but it still takes some money out of pocket to make those things happen. That and supporting candidates is another thing that we, we have done this year for the very first time. We've never given LPCO history, has never given any money to candidates. And we did this year, $6,500. So we made a pretty big dent in, in helping the candidates that were running full on runs to help them fight the fight. Well, that's great. That's great news. Yeah. I mean, it seems like uh, everything that's been going on this year from the candidates we're running to to this lawsuit now, the Libertarian Party is becoming a major force in Colorado politics, bigger than it has been. And uh, that's pretty exciting for people who believe in liberty, freedom, small government, and uh, and the future, really. Very much so. I, I agree. And like I said, I'm very proud to be uh, amongst the people that are fighting this fight. 
Awesome, Wayne. Well, perfect. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for your leadership on this lawsuit and other issues. And I uh, we'll hope to talk to you again soon in the future. Thank you, Brandon. It's great to be with you. Take care.